Hey everyone, Kenny Sergeant Steel here, and today I want to do a very special video. Uh, this is one I've been wanting to do for a while, and I want to start out by saying none of this is sponsored. None of this has been driven by a manufacturer, a product maker, but what I want to do is go over the pros and cons every single storage case that I'm familiar with or have researched pretty well too. And as you can see, I own a lot of them. It's it's kind of a problem actually. I own too many storage cases because I've switched systems over the years of which ones I prefer to travel with my army in. But I can say that I do use all of them. It's just in different ways for different armies for different reasons. And so for that, I wanted to go over it all with you today and tell you what I think are, are probably some of the best carrying cases and army display cases on the market. So how did I come to decide what's the best? Well, I wanna preface with, it's subjective, right? Some things are more objective than others, but it's still just my opinion. But I do intend to actually put out the, the Excel sheet the work document that I put together where I actually scored these on a, on various things that I thought were important for army carrying and display cases. So I got it all here and those various categories were capacity, ease of packing and unpacking, display, model protection, durability, customization, and hobby tool storage. Then I also compared this point system to what these cost. And that's on average. I want to stress that with the cost too. Because companies like Battle Foam vary wildly in their price depending on how you want to kit them out. Table War is pretty standard. So is KR Multicase. So their prices don't vary wildly. But Battle Foam does. So I tried my best to kind of average those prices, uh, determine whether you might use custom or standard loadout on these cases, compared that price to the number of points in all the other categories, and then that gave me my final overall rating, which I'll go over at the end of the video. I don't want to spoil anything because I also want you to form your own opinions. Just because I rate something as the best case, doesn't mean it is the best case for everybody in every situation. And I wanna go over that a little bit during this video, but also there's a lot going on out there. There's a lot of different games and armies and all kinds of different things that could impact what your needs are. So please be aware that none of this is definitive. It is all just a gauge from my own experience of owning Astro Militarum, Custodes, Space Marines, Chaos Space Marines, Sisters of Battle, and many other armies usually rated the Warhammer 40,000. I don't normally transport anything other than my Warhammer models. I don't transport my D&D models outside of little tiny plastic totes that I get really cheaply from like Target. So this is mostly about war games, not necessarily even skirmish games. That's a whole different level of model storage display and transport when you get down to like five to 10 models. I'm talking about war games where you have giant armies like you do in Warhammer 40,000 and you need to transport those around. So that's what we're going over today. And just to keep in mind, opinions may vary. So let's start out with right here on my right hand side, I have the Table War full size case and a Table War half case. These are the same system. They do come in a lot of different colors currently. This is the winter of 23-24. And if you go on the Table War website, you'll find these in khaki, purple, this nice green, they come in black. Um, they have lots of different options. So this case is a, is a hard case, as you can see. It is very sturdy. It comes with a clear front on it and these heavy duty latches and carry handle. They are heavy. I'm gonna tell you right now, full size case with a full army in it has a little bit of weight. So you are going to get a little bit of a workout carrying this case around. But I think the pros outweigh the cons on this one. One of the great things about this case is it's primarily for magnet, you know, magnetized models. You store them on these uh, trays that are inside. You just open it up. The door can actually come off. So let's go like this. 
we will pop the door off. I can lay it off to the side. You can even open up the top. You can slide your armies out, right? They come on these, uh, not only do the shelf trays themselves pop out, but the trays in those trays on those shelves pop out. So you can quickly and easily take your models out, especially say you want to keep your army in this all the time. I'm just going to use infantry and basilisk today. So I can quickly grab those two sheets out and put my army on display or sort them out and put them on the table. Very quick, very easy. Same with packing up. I find this very easy to use and it's very customizable as well. These shelves all have these roughly half inch different height slots here. And so from that, you can set these at all different heights and positions. They come with a two thirds kind of width tray and a one third width tray. They also come with a full length one that is solid plastic. I have that on my Space Marines Army. It's, that, it's down behind me here. And what that's for is two things. You can put a flexible magnetic sheet on it and still magnetize and put your models on it. You can get that from 3M or just any other manufacturer, put that over top of it, really great. I think Table War may even sell some accessories for that. But the other thing you can do with those cool hard plastic um, sheets that go inside of here is you can base them. You could make it a display case, like a true display case. And they do have some examples of this, I think on the website where you could do your basing material and your flocking and everything in the theme of your army and still like put little magnets and everything on it if you wanted to and have your army on beautiful display. And imagine if that was what I had in here, right? I could just grab two of those out, set them down, bam. My display board is my carrying case. It's a really great system. Really wonderful, very flexible. The other neat thing that they do is every single Table War case comes with these neat little trays in the bottom and they are big enough to hold a codex, to hold your dice, to hold your data um, sheets. They hold my dice tray, measuring tape, notebook, pens, everything. My order tokens that I get from Grotskal Workshop, I do highly recommend those. You get that all and put it all down in here. And then if you wanted to label it, so say you wanted to really splurge and get one of these for each of your different armies, you could label it on the bottom. Oh, this is the codex data cards and dice specifically for my Ashmole Terram army or my Ultramarines army or my Custodes army. Really cool customizable case. It's also great as a hobbyist myself. I love being able to display my models. And this case lets me do that. Also lets me transport them quickly and easily. So for all the categories, I'm gonna go over what I've rated this one then but not on the price yet. I want to say up all that for last. So for capacity, I give the Table War Tower case a 20. I give the half size case a 15. You can't fit as many models in it, right? And so the, the smaller size cases naturally get a lower rating, um, but this one's a 20, that's a 15 out of 20. That's pretty good. For ease of packing, unpacking, a nine. And that depends on how you magnetize your models, but everything comes in and out of here very easily, goes back in really easily. As somebody who plays a horde army, this saves me a ton of time. Absolutely love it. For display, I give it a seven. It's not fully transparent all the way around. It's only got one transparent side, but you have several different options. You can just leave it on display like this. You could also get those hard plastic trays and build a nice Dharama and set your models down that way. So for with that reason, this could be even be an eight rather than a seven out of 10. Um, but so just keep that in mind, really great for display. Model protection, nine. I have never broken a model with a Table War Tower case, ever. The only, and the only reason I don't give it a 10, almost no case is perfect. But if you were to drop this case, there's a chance your models could get dislodged and broken, okay? It's not perfect, but nine out of 10, I have traveled to the Warhammer Grand Narrative, multiple Adepticons, multiple Novas. I use this case, never broken a model. Customization, I also give it a nine because of the different shelf heights, because of the tray, because of the different tray types you can put in here. It's really flexible in what you can do with it. So I give it a nine. For durability, 9.5. Once again, almost nothing's perfect. But the reason, the only reason I don't give it a 10 is because you could scratch and ding up the 
the plexiglass sheet in the front window, but it is built in such a way that they have these nice borders around it. So as long as you're not rubbing this up against something, if you just like set it against the wall, your plexiglass sheet can't touch that, can't get scratched very easily because it has this nice framing around the borders. So that does protect it. And then for hobby tool storage, I give it a 10. If you got the tray in the bottom, you could fit more than you'll ever need for a game of Warhammer 40K in that bottom. You could even also get your, um, if you were doing Horus Heresy, it would fit also your uh, templates and any other tools that you would need. So really great for the hobby tool storage as well. Really wonderful case. Next, let's talk about the KR multi cases. So I only have one of the three options here. I just want to preface by saying that. They have cardboard cases, they have hard aluminum cases, and they have a backpack case. All are really great options, but generally they're the same storage size. You can squeeze a little more into the backpack, but they fit just about the same amount of foam and the same amount of models and everything else. So with these, um, you can get a decent amount of storage. They're about the same size of a pack 432 by, um, you know, Battle Foam, but they're definitely like half the capacity or less of a half size Table War Tower case. So you're not, you're gonna need multiple of these. So keep that in mind. Um, unless you have a very small army, uh, maybe you could get your custodies in there. I don't know, I need almost a full size case or a half size case from Table War to fit my custodies. So you don't get a whole lot of capacity out of each of these, but you do have different types of cases. And with that, there's different pricing and different affordability. So I'll go over how I rate each of those overall in the end. But for capacity, I rate these a 14, all three different versions, whether it's the aluminum case, the cardboard case, or the backpack, they're, they're a 14. You could fit some Lords of War in them. You could potentially, if you got your antennas and stuff on your um, basilisks, or sorry, not basilisks, your Bane blades magnetized and so forth and pop them off, you could get the pluck foam and I think fit two Bane blades in here. So it's possible to fit a Lord of War. You definitely get knights that you could lay down, fit them in here. Uh, you could get your vehicles, you get your infantry. Mine, this is where I used to store everything for my Scions. So I have my Toroxes in here. I have my Vendetta. Uh, I used to have a Vendetta just for my Scions. That's how long I've been playing. It's Legends now. Uh, so I can fit all those in here and all their little pieces inside this case. So obviously you can fit a lot, right? Because Valkyrie's Vendetta frame takes up a lot of space and I can still fit four vehicles around it plus all their accessories in these little slots. They come with this nice blue foam. It looks really good. My only critique of the foam is that for some reason I do find that this snags. I, I know their advertisement says it doesn't, but for some reason I find that there's kind of more friction there's more resistance in this. And so when you pull a model out, it tends to drag a little more, even though I think the foam is a little bit finer. I haven't really studied it, but it seems that way. So maybe that's what's happening is uh, maybe it's more granular friction uh, rather than the kind of more uh, puffy nature of the battle foam foam. Uh, but either way, I do, um, I think getting models in and out is okay. I give them generally a seven on ease of packing and unpacking. I give them Zero on display, can't display your models. They're all solid cases. They're not meant for display. Um, for model protection, overall, I'll give the cardboard case an eight. I have broken the model inside of here before uh, when it's dropped. Um, it does absorb a little bit of shock. It's pretty rare. I've only ever broken the models once inside of this case. So it's pretty rare. All the other versions, the aluminum case and the backpack, give them a nine. Uh, they're gonna keep your models pretty safe. Durability, uh, the aluminum case gets a 10. The backpack gets an eight and the cardboard case gets a six. Now my cardboard case is nearly 10 years old. I don't use it that often, but it's starting to show its age and it's starting to wear and tear. The cardboard's getting, cardboard's getting warped. It's getting bent a little bit, um, just a lot of moves. I've lived in so many different houses since I bought this case, taking it to a number of events. So it's showing its wear and tear. The cardboard just doesn't stand up as long as the aluminum or even the backpack. Um, for customization, it's a six. It's, it, you just put foam trays in it. There's nothing else you can do to these. You just put foam inside. Um, 
except for the backpack, obviously you could hang things off of it. I mean, it's a backpack. It's got all kinds of like little straps and extra pouches on it. It's, it's very nice for the hobby storage. Uh, well, the backpack gets a 10, but the aluminum case and the cardboard case gets a four. They're not meant to store your dice or your measuring tape or your codex. You can, you could, you could leave a couple extra little slots, maybe put your dice and things in there. Uh, you could pluck foam out your cards. Uh, you could even leave a little gap between uh, the top of your foam tray and the top of the case so you can put your codex in there. It's what I used to do with my battle foam cases all the time. Um, when um when i just ran out of room and i have another well back when we used to have to carry three four books to a game of warhammer 40k and so they're not meant to carry your hobby tools so for that i give uh the two versions of this a four but i give the backpack a 10 because that is meant to carry all kinds of different tools in different ways um so overall i'm fairly happy with kr multi-case they're a good company make a good tray uh good carrying case and so let's now talk about this giant monstrosity next to me, Battle Foam. So I own th th four different types of storage cases from Battle Foam. Four different ones. I have the Pack 432. I have the Pack 720. I have these cool cardboard cases. I think they call them the Echo cases. And I also have these stackable, almost like comic book box cases as well. Um, that's not even half of the different cases they make. Let me, let me tell you right now, Battle Foam is the most diverse product and company on the market for model storage. They make like giant um, 1520 cases or whatever number it is. The numbers, by the way, on the pack systems, that's how many infantry models they can hold if you went to maximize this. So this one can hold up to 720 infantry this one can hold up to 432. I think it's based on 25, 28 millimeter bases. That's what these can hold. So it's a great way in case you're thinking about, wow, what size case do I need for my army? It's a great way. The number on there can help you kind of figure that out, especially if you're a guard player. So I always really appreciated that they did that. The other great thing about these cases is not only their capacity, but their customization, as I, as I was mentioning earlier, they make them in all different sizes, all different types. Um, they make them for foam, obviously, the name's Battle Foam, but they've also got into the market of magnetic tray systems that you can slide inside of these two. They're a little more expensive than the foam, but if you wanna magnetize your models, that's a great way to get these cool cases that are very customizable, lots of pouches and stuff, carrying, um, you know, they got carrying straps on them and everything. Great way to do that. So let me talk about the scores. For capacity on these, the 720, I rated a 20. The 432, I rated a 15, right? You stored almost half the amount of models and things in a 432, but in a 432, I can stack up two foam, trays that can store up to like six chimeras plus extra little bits and pieces plus another tray with like other vehicles in it as well or two or three trays of infantry on top of those chimeras or chimera chassis so this can actually hold a lot of stuff in it in the 432 but the 720 i i can get trays i got one of these that's actually set up to hold six lords of war i can put six bane blade chassis inside of one or two Macarius Vulcans with a Minotaur and a few other models, plus four Bane Blades. These can hold a lot. There's a lot of space. I forgot to mention, the Table War case can also hold models like Bane Blades. You can fit two or more per shelf, depending on how you set them in here. They actually fit front to back. There's enough space between the back wall and the front of this to fit a Bane Blade in here. So I know you can easily get two. You might even be able to finagle a third. Depends on your sponsons and how you've set up your models, right? But anyhow, back to Battle Foam. I've given the, I don't have one here, but they have something called a stacker cardboard box. It's basically the size of a 720. And that one I also give a 20 because it's basically the same size. You can store a lot in it. And this Echo case here, I give a 15 as well because it's nearly the same as a 432. Um, as for ease of packing, unpacking, I rated them all an eight. That's because of the type of foam they have. I've used these for, oh my gosh, eight, nine years, 
I've been using Battle Foam, and I do find it fairly easy to get my models in and out. They, uh, the bayonets on the older Kadia models did snag, and models with a lot of fiddly bits that stick out, like Adeptus Mechanicus, can be a bit of a pain in this type of foam transport. That's why I do rec recommend magnetized cases for a lot of intricate models. But for my Cadians, right, without bayonets on them, everything fits in here really great, easy to get in and out, vehicles easy to get in and out. I love that I can take like little slots sometimes for my magnetized pieces and stick them in there and store them in there as well. Uh, really wonderful. And with getting models in and out, these are also really great for my resin models. And that's why I still use Battle Foam today is because I have a lot of resin from Forge World and I do want to get it safely to the battlefield, back home again, no breaks, and Battle Foam helps me do that. I can magnetize them for my table war cases, don't get me wrong, but because they're resin and if this tipped over or fell, it would be more prone of that model coming loose and the weight of those resin models would just smash any plastic on the same shelf. So I really love my battle foam cases for that reason. Uh, display, zero. You're not displaying Diddly Squat. Everything they make is um, opaque. There's no display if your models are inside of it. Now, if you didn't have the magnetic racks, you could flip these open, these just zipper, open and shut. So let me show you one here, get the KR multi-case out of the way a little bit. Off to the side you go. Let's set this down. I wanna open it up and show you. So if you did have the magnetic racks, you could go like this and just flip it open and open it up. Now I don't, so I'm not gonna do this because there's actually some resin models inside. I don't want them to break, but open it up. And here's my Thunderbolt. This is actually the carrying tray for my Thunderbolt. These foam have these nice kind of harder bottoms as well. So that means as you pick up your foam trays, they don't bend on you. The models don't fall out, doesn't get all wonky. Down below, I have my Crassus Armor Transport, flying stand, and then I actually have several empty compartments here. If I wanted to add in Sentinels or uh, Basilisk or something else, I got room for that if I wanted to do that. So that's all in here, um, really great. So for model protection, this is the only case I'm gonna rate a 10. You can, I have sat these down hard, I have dropped them and my models have not broken. These cases are phenomenal for model protection. They're the only thing for model protection that beats out Table War. So Table War got a nine, these got a, 10. So I really do recommend Battle Foam if your number one goal is to keep your model safe. But durability, well, I recommend the pack cases as a 10. So these cases are very durable. I've never had any of them break, tear, rip, or anything. Um, they're really sturdy. I mean, it's high quality material. They got these little studs on the top so you can even stack them. They have a system on some of them. You can zip them together. And all of that has been really durable. The quality level of these cases is fantastic. Uh, customization, nine. And the only reason they don't get a 10 is because you can't make them transparent. <laughs> That's it. But they get a nine, and here's why. Uh, as you can see on this side, they make little Molly attachments. So they have a Molly system on here. If you don't know what Molly is, it's what they've used on modern military equipment. So a lot of my stuff I had in the army had Molly on it. I'm very familiar with it. It's just like webbing. And you take these straps, you slide them in with a couple of buckles and you clip all your different stuff on in different places wherever you want it. Particularly we had it on our harnesses and body armor. Uh, you had Molly netting on it. And so with this, there's Molly on the cases. You can see it on the front of this 720 here. It's on the sides of this 432. Um, this all looks very different now. Battle foam, like I said, they make so many different versions of all these cases. It, you're going to see all kinds of crazy stuff on their website. It's super, super customizable. They make they make a pouch just big enough for my hobby journal and pens. They make one specifically for a tape measure. They can make one that holds your, hold your dice. Um, all of them usually have pouches on the front. These pouches can hold a codex or two. I've put two or three inside the big pouch before. There's little pouches to hold all your other little hobby tools and then Molly on that as well, depending on which one you buy. And yeah, the, you're not gonna find 
a more customizable case than this. It's really cool. The other neat thing they do, and I do not have an example here, but the other neat thing they do is you can custom order your own foam trays, height, and the laser cut, or however they do it, your own custom like slots. So if you're like me, I have a bunch of Forge World models and the pluck foam's fine. The pluck foam is great, but if you wanted to maximize it, you wanted to like squeeze in um, a couple different of those really wonkily shaped models in here all at the same time, you can actually submit to them a diagram and with the measurements on it and they will cut it out. So I have Illustrator and Photoshop and stuff. So I've made those layouts, measured my models, custom made them. There's no other company that's gonna custom cut you a foam tray that I'm aware of. I'm sorry if I'm doing a disservice to KR Multicase, but Battle Foam's the only one I know who does it. So for that reason, they're the most customizable case on the market, hands down. Now, as for the customization of the cardboard cases, uh, well, they get kind of like a seven. That's simply because the pluck foam and the custom cut trays, you technically could customize the inside of these. Once again, have slots to hold your data cards or dice or other tools. There's no reason why you couldn't. They're not necessarily designed for that at the get-go, you know, if you buy one of these off the website that aren't customized, uh, but you could use the pluck foam and do the same. So it is possible to customize the inside of the cardboard ones to do what you want with. Um, so very good job there with these. Uh, so they sell four different cases just here that I'm talking about, but they make bigger ones, smaller ones, and all kinds of cool little custom attachments to these as well. So overall, I do highly recommend Battle Foam. So last, uh, but not least, is Crystal Fortress. So you all just saw my review video. I just got this one in. And I, I am sticking with my recommendation for this one. It is the best display case available in the market. It's 360 on display of your models. There's, there's nothing else on the market that does it. They solved a need and they've done it very well. I'm very happy with that. So, but the other places is where Crystal Fortress is gonna struggle a little bit. So when it comes to capacity, uh, where I gave these 15 and 20s and Table War got a, a, a 20 and a, and a 15 as well, I'm gonna give Crystal Fortress, and this is assuming you have a hump back, okay? A hump back is four of these quarter cases together. So it makes a full size cube that's like this, comes out like this, a 9.5. Now let me explain, because it doesn't seem fair. But Crystal Fortress is the only case that can't hold a Lord of War, effectively. Um, it might be possible to get two of these to get like the larger tall lids and sit one <laughs> on its side. They're not meant for that. They're not meant to transport a Bane Blade they're not meant to transport an Imperial Knight, although you can. You can make, the, like I said, the taller version of this, get a four inch lid, get a four inch case, and then you could fit your Knight in there. So that is possible, but they're really not meant for it. And it's not easy to transport your larger Lords of War that way, your Titanic models. That lost them a lot of points because you can't transport that. But if you're not using giant models, then this is an excellent one for most vehicles, where they also lost points, and definitely infantry, cavalry, bikes, and so forth. Um, I did check this. I can fit three Chimeras inside of one of these. And so with the quarter case here, if I had two of these full-length ones, I could have six Chimeras in a quarter case, and that means I could have, in a full-size case, 24 Chimera chassis vehicles. That's not bad. That's it's really not bad, um, but more limited on what you can fit inside of this. So 9.5. As for ease of packing, unpacking, this gets an eight. Take the lid off, model out on the table. Done, model back in, lid back on. The only time it gets a little wonky, and the only reason I didn't give it like a nine or 10 is because of the way they do their kind of like little sections here. And so as you're kind of like pulling this part and you're getting to the models below, you just got to be careful that you don't like that the sections don't like fall away or anything. So it's not as easy as a table war case, not as easy as battle foam, but it, it is pretty easy to get your models in and out. So they get an eight. Uh, it's really great. 
for display, like I said, they're the only 10. Model protection, I give it a 7. The only reason I give it a 7 is if you dropped it. If you drop one of these cases, it is likely that the case itself is going to get damaged. You drop battle foam, not the case. Probably not even going to break a model. Drop table war, you're probably just going to ding it or scratch it a little bit. I mean, come on, they even have like this pleather lining on the inside that's really nice and on the lid and stuff. It that, like These are really durable. I've been using these a lot. And as you can tell, there's only one little scratch on the whole thing on the door. And that's my fault, just abusing these things. But Crystal Fortress is a little more fragile in terms of the case itself. And with that, it puts your models at a little bit higher risk. But they're pretty durable. I mean, right? This, this isn't breaking. It's not coming apart. Um, it's pretty decent. I don't even have the strap around it. So for durability, I give the Crystal Fortress case five. It's just much more susceptible to being broken if you know you hit it or you drop it or something. It's never going to be as sturdy as the Table War or the Battle Foam cases or even a cardboard case, which can stand a little bit of a beating and wear and tear. I mean, obviously, cardboard more susceptible to water damage and so forth uh, than what this is. So pros and cons, uh, but this stuff is a little more fragile than uh, most of the other cases. For customization, I do give this a, a, a six, right? You do have those great little storage cubes that you can put inside of these and sort out all your little dice or little tokens and so forth, but it's not gonna hold a codex and it's not gonna easily hold your index cards either. So customization is a little more limited, but internally you could do a lot for your models and all your small little hobby tools that you do have. And then for um, your hobby tool storage, oh, sorry, that's a six as well. Um, so, all right, I've now covered all these. I want to cover one thing before I go into what I think the final kind of ranking is of all of these cases. And what I want to talk about is based upon the points I gave them, what is the, how many points do you get per dollar spent, right? That should be a good way to rate, like, is it worth the amount of money? Because it's not simply about, oh, well, I can get this one for $60 to $80 and this one for $260, right? That's not always a fair comparison because you get different things out of different cases. So per dollar spent, okay, so for dollar spent, who came out on top was actually the KR multi-case cardboard case. Uh, so that case right there for dollar spent was a really good investment for what it does. Even at the lower capacity and everything, it came out pretty well. You can get one of these for $52. A standard KR multi-case um, cardboard case is 52 bucks. That is the cheapest out of all of these. And also for your points, you get a pretty good investment. The next one was actually the Battle Foam Echo case here. And it came, it comes at $60 for a standard case with foam inside of it. And that's not bad. That's not a bad investment. The next one on the list is actually the KR aluminum case and the Kaiser case. So both of those you can get for $82. And once again, really good for what you get out of it in terms of model carrying capacity and protection. It's excellent. The next one of these goes to the Battle Foam Stacker Box. It's just a bigger version of the Echo, essentially, uh, but it's a pull-off top. And then the next one, so the top five, and the next one goes to the KR Backpack. It's actually a really good deal as, uh, for dollar for point. And so that works out really well. Now, that's just looking at it dollar to what you get out of it. That's not actually the overall thing. So then I take that score. So what I did is I convert the dollar to point ratio to a scoring system of one out of 10. And then I double it. Okay. And nobody can get a, nobody can get a 10 or even a 20 if I doubled the score. And the reason being is because it would have to be free. You do have to spend some money to get these. So nobody got a perfect score the way I set it up. So I tried to make it as fair as I could. And with that, I got the overall final scores for all 10 of these cases that I reviewed here. So in 10th place, 
unfortunately, is Crystal Fortress Humpback Case. Um, I think if you do want to display your army, it is the best display case on the market. Once again, this is subjective and depends on what you want out of it. But if you're looking for a display case, they're the best one. But in terms of overall value, uh, I would actually have to rate them at number 10. Remember, our goal is transport and display, not just display. And Crystal Fortress uh, was just not too far behind everybody else, um, but they didn't rate as high as the others. Um, the KR Multi case, cardboard case, came in at number nine. Um, it had a pretty good score. It did fairly well, but um, because of my own experience with it and that this is susceptible to water, if you do drop it, you could break your models. I don't find the foam in the case as protective as battle foam or even the hard KR cases. So it gets a nine. Number eight comes in at the KR aluminum case. So once again, it, I think it's the foam. I think it's the blue foam that they use and the thickness of it. And that just, I have a hard time with it. So I maybe I'm biased. And, but I just, so it gets number eight on the list. Number seven goes to the Battle Foam Echo Case, which I would still highly recommend. I I think these are great cases. I own five of them. <laughs> so obviously I like them. They're a great affordable option. So don't take my rating as you shouldn't buy this. No, I think each of these serve a different role. This is a great case, but it comes at number seven. Number six goes to the KR Backpack. That's right. So um, KR backpack, it's number six. It's a great option, especially because all the versatility to it, of being able to water bottle your hobby tools, you, your models inside of it. It's a great little backpack. You could be your carry on on a flight. So if you can fit your army in it, great option for you. And it doesn't even look like you're carrying a Warhammer army, right? It looks like you're just carrying your regular backpack onto an airplane. So that's pretty cool. Number five goes to the Battle Foam Stacker Box, which I don't have. Um, but I do have the smaller version of it. And when you get one of those, um, I think it's a great deal also. It's a great cheap way to store your army. Just gotta be careful about water and wear and tear on the outside of the case. Cause it's, I mean, it's cardboard. It's a glorified cardboard box with foam inside of it. Uh, next at number four, we have the pack 432. I own three of these. I love them. They're very durable, very customizable, and they definitely protect your models. Like I said, the only downside to Battle Foam is you can't display your cool models while they're inside of it. And it takes a little longer to pack and unpack your army from one of these cases. Same with KR cases. All right, so pack four, the two. Uh, so number three goes to the pack 720. I own four of these. I absolutely love these cases and they're still how I transport my resin models. You're going to see me carrying one or two of these, at least to Adepticon. I really do love these cases, but one of the issues with them for me is the space they take up because the foam takes up air, right? It takes up room. And so you don't fit as much in here as I think you can fit in a table work case. And they also don't display your army. So with that, you gotta, it takes longer to pack and unpack and it takes up more space. And um, But they, they are the best cases to protect your models. But at number two and number one, I think it's pretty obvious at this point, we have the Table War half case and the Table War full size case are definitely my top two recommendations. So I, I use these models regularly. This is how I transport my 2000 point Astro Militarum Army is in a full-size Table War Tower case. Never broken a model, really enjoy it. When I show up at the shop, because of the hobbyist I am, I get to leave my models on display. And, you know, I, I'll i be honest, I like that. I like when people come over and they gawk at my models and they're, and they're impressed and we're, it creates dialogue and conversations. And this hobby is about community. And this case and this case create those dialogues better than any others. And, but with this having the durability and the storage and the flexibility and customization that it does, it's my number one case. Um, even though it comes in at a little higher price point than like the cardboard cases, obviously, because this is aluminum and plexiglass and so forth, but it's a great quality case. I mean, come on, they even line the inside and like this, like I said, this kind of fake leather material. It is a higher end case. Now, I just want to also wrap up with, you know what? 
most of what I'm talking about here, these are luxury items. This is a luxury hobby though, just like golf or airsoft or anything else, uh, surfing and kayaking even, you spend a decent amount of money on some of those, um, get in easily several hundred dollars. I do cycling too. Um, and that, my bike, I have my bike now for years and I don't want to replace it even though I've had to do a lot of repairs on it because they're so expensive. Um, but this is a luxury hobby. These are luxury items. There's nothing wrong with transporting your army. If what you want to do is get a plastic tote, slap some um, cloths or even a piece of magnetic uh, metal in the bottom and magnetize your models to that, hot glue it in there or whatever, or even like I do with my D&D minis, I just buy like those little organizer uh, plastic totes and I put the little spacers in them and I stick my D&D models inside. Hey, if that's how you want to transport your army, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't ever shame anybody for what they want to do. But if you want to spend a little money on storing, transporting and displaying your army, then that's what I've talked about here today. And that's what I want to talk to you all about, what I would recommend. My top recommendation is the Table War Tower case. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching the video. Thank you for being here. This was not holistic of the whole market. There's so many things out there. In fact, I have display cases up here on the shelf. I didn't even show you all. I didn't even bring down here to discuss today. I decided to keep it to 10 of them that I wanted to talk about. And that's also a disservice to companies like Battlefoam who make so many different storage solutions. Um, but I just wanted to give a good overview of what I know and understand. And so I've done that here today. Uh, but feel free in the comments below, talk about what you like for model transport or talk about critiques of the way I rated these various cases. I'm going to share the scores in the video description or a link somewhere or even on the screen in this video so you can see all that. And let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you recommend as well because I am I want to know and I want the viewers to know your opinions too. It's not just mine. I really care about your all's voice. So put it down in the comments below. I really want to hear from you all on this one. So that's it for today. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe, please like the video. I do other content as well. I get featured in battle reports and sometimes it's been a little while, but I do my own. I do unit reviews. I do hobby product reviews on this channel. So if you're new, uh, there's a lot of different stuff. You can go to my channel and check out there and look at my playlist. So really appreciate, all, appreciate you all being here. As always, have fun wargaming and remember, Katie stands.